डॉक्टर आर एस चटर्जी सर डॉक्टर अतुल जेटे सर लुईज आमिर हेवी बर्डन ड्यूटीज एंड रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज हैव एपियर्ड ऑनलाइन इन दिस सेमिनार टू डिग्निफाय एंड मैग्निफाय आवर टॉपिक ऑफ इंटरेस्ट हियर टूडे लोनार लेक ऑल्सो नोन एज लोनार क्रेटर इज ए नोटिफाइड नैशनल जियो हेरिटेज सलाइन सोडा लेक लोकेटेड एट लोनार इन बुलढाणा डिस्ट्रिक्ट महाराष्ट्र इट इज अ फेमस एज वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट बेसॉल्टिक इम्पैक्ट क्रेटर इन एन इंटरेस्टिंग फेनॉमिना दिस इज अबाउट ट्वेंटी थाउजंड इयर ओल्ड लोनार क्रेटर लेक हैज मिस्टेरियसली टर्न्ड पिंक एंड बिकेम a hot topic of discussion among scientists and nature lovers i am sure that the honorable resource persons will enlighten and uncover the mystery welcome you all once again thank you sir हेलो 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 आवाज येतोय 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 थँक यू सर नाव आहे तो सर येतो आवाज दळवी सर बोला येतोय हेलो हां थँक यू डॉक्टर शाहपूरकर सर फॉर इंट्रोडक्टरी स्पीच नाउ मे आई रिक्वेस्ट प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर महादेव गवणे सर टू प्लीज गिव वेलकम ऍड्रेस thank you madhav bhavani sir thank you thank you sir thank you okay sir a very good morning to all honorable dr gopal ji patil president shri chhatrapati shikshan samstha latur honorable dr pr deshmukh sahib vice president shri chhatrapati shikshan samstha latur honorable principal ayat jadhav sir secretary shri chhatrapati shikshan samstha latur today's resource person dr rajat subra chatterji senior scientist Indian Institute of Remote Sensing ISRO Dehradun Government of India Dr Atul Jete sir respected uh, ex principal Dr Aryal Kaule sir joint organizer and vice principal of our college Dr AJ Raju sir divai Dr Om Prakash Shapruka sir Dr SJ Phule sir IQC coordinator Dr Abhijit Yadav convener of this webinar DV Sonkamli co convener Professor Vijay Dalvi Kishor Sinde, Dr. Hadore, and all respected participants, on the behalf of college, I welcome you in national online seminar on mystery of Crater Lake Lona, India. Rajeshi Shahu Mahavidyalaya, now an autonomous known for its excellence in education, started in a warehouse with 50 students about half a century ago. This college paved and created its own education pattern, which is popularly known as Latur pattern. Our founder and management members, under the leadership of Dr. Gopalaji Patil Sahib, believe that education only made change in the lives of rural and downtrodden students. With the motto "Pursuit of Excellence," this college plans implement. and try to achieve excellence in every sphere of education i put the result only last year 2018-19 sir 965 students in medical colleges 275 students in engineering colleges 49 in nits and iit got admission our college is the only one college in india that is accredited for maximum entries in medical and engineering colleges in the hsc board result as well as in the university result we have shown our academic excellence every year ugc accredited our college a grade two times ugc also has given us college with potential for excellence status with these landmark achievements we became the first autonomous college in entire maratwada region since 2013-14 this college has widened its horizon with autonomy to cope with a new challenges and expectation of higher education under the autonomy along with curriculum we have privilege to focus on 
overall development of students and their placements. We have an active placement sale through which till now many students got placed in various company like TCS, Wipro, Infosys, ICIC, HDFC, Bank, etc. All these efforts are recognized by the government of Maharashtra awarded us the first Best Educational Institution Award. Eshwantra Chavan Open University Nashik awarded Best Examination Center Award. Our parent university, Swami Ramanal Tith Manatwara University Nande also honored us with Best College Award. Education World India Autonomous College Ranking 2021 has placed us the position of 92nd rank. Another one proud achievement of our college is one faculty member and three students selected for INSA Summer Research Fellowship 2020. Two students were selected in CSIR Summer Research Training Program 2021. National Education Excellence Award of Best Higher Education Institute in Maharashtra. Our Young Scientist, Young Scientist Award, Dr. Abhijit Yadav. With these academic achievements of our students, also proved their excellence in NSS, NCC, sports, culture. We bagged various prestigious awards and trophies in these activities. Here I mentioned the recent achievement of sports that our student Jyoti Pawa represented India in baseball in at international tournament in China. In this era of globalization, collaborative venture are need of time. In this respect, we take initiative and have functional MOUs. Journey of success can be figured out as started with only 50 students, which goes to 10,000 students at present. We, we have eight UG programs, 13 PG programs, 15 PhD mm -hmm. programs, and 32 certificate courses. We also started a special three-year degree course where we provide competitive examination curriculum. We are fortunate to gain the trust of students and parents. I think this is the greatest achievement of our college. COVID-19 is a really toughest challenge. Facing this institution is given as an opportunity to organize online courses, webinars, and workshop. Today's webinar is one of them. I am happy that more than 700 participants have enrolled for this webinar. I appreciate the efforts of uh, HOD, Geography Department, and uh, our COE, Dr. Om Prakash Shahpurkar and his all team. I especially, uh, special thanks to resource person, Dr. R.S. Chatterjee sir, senior scientist, and Dr. Atul Jete sir for giving their valuable time. Today is World Population Day. Organizing this webinar on this day is one of our efforts to make you away the challenges before us. I am sure that the webinar will definitely boost the knowledge and skill of the participant and request all of you to take the maximum benefit of this webinar. I wish the webinar a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Principal Saheb, for giving a brief introduction of Samstha and College as well as welcome address of this national seminar. Now, may I request chairperson of today's national seminar, Honorable Dr. Gopal Roji Patil Sahib, President, President Shiv Chhatrapati Shikshan Samstha, to give a presidential address. Now, Dr. Gopal Roji Patil Sahib, presidential address. Now, may I request Hello. Dr. Gopal Roji Patil Sahib for presidential address? Dr. Sahib, join us. Thank 
टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम है डॉक्टर साहब आवाज नहीं है तीन ओके सर ओके सर अपन डायरेक्ट सर सुरू कर डॉक्टर साहब ओके सर ओके सर सॉरी फॉर दिस डिस्टर्बेंस देर इज अटल बेट चेंज इन शेड्यूल नाउ the resource person for today's seminar dr r h chatterji sir i give some uh, brief introduction of dr chatterji sir dr s r chatterji scientist and head of the jo science department government of india uh, dehradun government of india irs isro dehradun of india now may i request dr chatterji sir to give his views regarding this national seminar Okay. Good morning to you all, and uh, honourable dignitaries, and uh, organisers, and all the participants. It is an opportunity to uh, say a little bit about the planetary science. We have been doing on planetary science. Okay, in a lunar crater, we had some lim limited exposures. We had some studies on lunar craters, but I think uh, Dr. Atul Jete will mostly he will explore on the details of the lunar crater. Okay. i will make a foundation for planetary studies and what is the linkage of uh, lunar crater for uh, planetary studies particularly for uh, moon for the study of the moon and for the mars and uh, as already it is uh, i mentioned by uh, many of the honorable speakers that it is very unique crater and uh, it is one of the uh, three craters in the country but it is very unique. and because it is the largest crater in a basaltic terrain and uh, this kind of crater you will not find anywhere uh, in the globe and it has lot of uh, implications it has lot of uh, significance for the planetary studies okay so uh, i will discuss mostly on the remote sensing techniques and the planetary missions for the planetary missions of isro and uh, how what are the approach and how we can address this uh, planetary studies and how, how we can link this uh, lunar lake lunar crater uh, with the planetary studies what are the different areas of research one can do okay so with a brief introduction i maybe uh, i can uh, start uh, my this uh, uh, lecture to whatever i have prepared for this uh, these participants i find there are almost 300 participants so that is a great thing uh, during this very difficult period in the country with the covid 19 this uh, issue everywhere in the country and in maharashtra particularly is also very seriously affected like other many other countries so uh, can i start my lecture yes sir okay so i am just sharing this so i have uh, made this title like this planetary studies using remote sensing uh, techniques and uh, significance of impact craters so there are many impact craters so what are the significance of impact craters with an introduction to lunar crater okay i am from indian institute of remote sensing dehradun it is uh, one of the units of indian space research organization so here you can see that uh, motive Motivation of planetary studies. Just let me shift this. Yeah. Motivation of uh, planetary studies. Okay, so there are uh, a number of fundamental questions in planetary studies, like uh, what is the origin of the sun and the planets? Okay, and uh, the evolution of the solar system, and particularly the Earth, and uh, planetary processes, particularly the different kind of processes operating in the the planets planet the bodies and different kinds of interactions that uh, is very important to understand and origin and evolution of life on the earth how it has originated and how it has been evolved and existence of life in other planetary bodies if any so this is a question mark so this is also another area of uh, motivation so for that uh, we must uh, uh, do planetary studies and uh, uh, lunar lake you know this is the an analog 
and that can be considered as a very beautiful analog for the lunar studies as well as for uh, this uh, planet Mars for uh, Martian studies. Okay, so that way lunar crater is very very important for uh, these planetary science studies. Okay, this is the very brief introductory slide that the what is the solar system? You know there are some terrestrial planets. Okay, so and the this astronomical unit the distance between the sun and earth. Okay, it is a, a 150 million uh, kilometer. And there are these planets, as you can see here. Some of the planets are being explored. Some are still to be explored. But for India and uh, Indian space research organizations, we are basically at this moment uh, limited to this your uh, planet uh, uh, Mars and the Moon. That is the uh, this your satellite of the Earth. We have also many plans, particularly the study of the sun and many other uh, the planets. But at this moment, that we have been working on these uh, these two planetary bodies. And this uh, journey of uh, this planetary science, the study of planetary science, it uh, started on 22nd October 2008. That is with the launch of the this Chandrayaan one. Okay, that is the first planetary mission from India and from ISRO. So this is Chandrayaan one launched in two, uh, 22nd October 2008, and the first attempt it was successful. Okay, and there are many instruments in this. That is very interesting. You will find there are eleven instruments, and in this eleven instruments, total sixteen sensors. So all the sensors, all the instruments, I will not discuss. What is uh, most important for this uh, your geological or geographical or terrain related studies? Okay, so those. Uh, instruments here you can see the tnc that is the terrain mapping camera it gives very high resolution image panchromatic image as well as it gives the digital elevation model that is the topography topography of the this lunar surface okay and uh, then there are a number of sensors uh, there are three basically three sensors were there for uh, spectral analysis spectral analysis for mineralogical study okay what are the mineralogical composition of the Lunar surface. So I see it was from ISRO, then MQ, okay, that was very, very good sensor, MQ, and also SATI from uh, Germany, okay. And there are some instruments like uh, for elemental analysis or chemical composition, like this is uh, SKIX or HEX, okay. And there is one very interesting instrument that is the mini SAR or miniature synthetic aperture. The radar that is a microwave uh, sensor, okay. Microwave sensor is very, very important, okay. So, because it has many advantages over the, the standard remote sensing techniques. Standard remote sensing techniques, uh, we mean to say that optical remote sensing, that is the solar radiation comes from the sun and it is getting reflected from the earth surface and that we sense by the satellite or by the aircraft. Similarly, this the solar radiation also, it can uh, go to the, it can reach the this moon and that can be sensed by the optical sensors like TNC and all the your uh, spectral analysis sensors as I told and this whereas the miniature synthetic aperture radar it is a, an active sensor so it transmitted energy it transmitted microwave pulse and then this microwave pulse it interacted with the lunar surface and because it is microwave so there is no atmospheric effects but in case so moon, you know, there is no atmosphere. So this aperture effect is, does not uh, pose any problem. Uh, but uh, for the micro, there are many other advantages, particularly active micro, because it has uh, this, it can penetrate also the ground. So it can give you subsurface information and it is, uh, your, this terrain information is much more highlighted. I'll come to that. What is the advantages of micro, then optical, as well as what are the optical sensors for spectral analysis. So here, this uh, very briefly, I'll also discuss about the this Mars Orbiter mission. It is also very, very important for India and for ISRO because uh, this is the first country. This is for the first attempt. This uh, reach the Mars. Okay. So this is Mars Orbiter mission, also known as Mangalayan mission. Uh, in this case, this uh, orbit is highly elliptical orbit. Okay, but it is imaging. When it is around 300 kilometer, that is the shortest uh, height, okay, above the uh, Martian surface. And uh, this farthest point, uh, uh, of course, it is 71,000 kilometer. It is very, very large distance, and it has an inclusion of 150 degree. 
Okay, so I'm not going to the details because our subject is a little different today, but just to give you a little introduction, what are the planetary missions we have. And uh, very interestingly, this uh, MOMS or Mongolian mission is uh, uh, active for many years, more than five years, it is uh, uh, taking the images and the important sensors in this uh, Mongol mission. So Mongolian mission is a Mars color camera. Okay, this Mars color camera or in CC, it is optical uh, this sensor, and uh, it uh, has three basically the uh, three colors uh, sensor. Okay, so you get color image of the, the this Martian surface, and spatial resolution it varies from 20 meters. So uh, as good as 20 meter to it is very close to four kilometer. Okay, there are different exposure modes. In addition to this Mars color camera, that is the most important sensor in the Magallan mission. There are thermal infrared imaging spectrometer. Spectrometer, and uh, this is the spectral range is seven to thirty micrometer. And why it is important? Because it can sense the temperature of the, the Mars surface. Okay, so you can have the this uh, your high temperature region or hotspot regions that will help us to understand if there is hydrothermal vents over the Martian surface. Again, we have the other sensors like methane sensor. Okay, this is also very very important because you know this uh, methane is one of the important gas in the Martian surface. And there are uh, these uh, Lehman Alpha photometer and uh, Mars exospheric this instrument. Okay, so these instruments are particularly important for the this, uh, this uh, radiation study, of the Martian radiation, okay, the radiation atmosphere. Now coming to the Chandrayaan-2. So this is uh, launched in 2019, uh, in July itself, so few days remaining to be one year, okay, anniversary, okay. Now it has uh, three payloads. One is lunar orbiter payloads and it is working absolutely fine. It's very uh, good uh, payloads are there, okay. Again, there are many sensors are here, but I will not discuss all. The most important thing is terrain mapping camera two, TMC2, very high resolution imaging camera with uh, 3D capability. So you'll get the topographic surface. Then we have the Imaging infrared spectrometer that will give you the this mineralogical composition or spectral analysis of the uh, this lunar surface, and here it is very important that it has a dual frequency microwave sensor, dual frequency capacitance radar. So in addition to the S band that was there in Chandrayaan one, here there is L band also, and L band is a longer wavelength. L band has a wavelength of 23 centimeter, whereas S band has 10 centimeter. And the beauty of the wavelength you know that if the wavelength is longer, it can penetrate more. So as it penetrates more, you will get more subsurface information. You know this lunar surface, there is a thick cover of regolith. That is the thick soil cover, okay? So if it can penetrate more, then you will get more subsurface information. That will help us to reveal what is the this, uh, this your subsurface layering of the regolith and what is the geometry of the regolith, okay? And even uh, if it can go uh, below that, or particularly where the regolith is very, very shallow, we can get the solid uh, lunar surface as well. So this kind of information you can have, and also there are other, this thing, your uh, here glass sensor, that is for chemical composition. But here, you know, these landers and rovers, so that uh, very, very unfortunate that uh, there is, because of hard landing, this uh, is not, uh, 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 successful, okay, but there is a good experiment and a good uh, lesson learned. So, and there is again, there is efforts to do it in the near future. Now, in planetary uh, these studies, just give me so. So in this area of planetary studies, see, there are the broad areas. I have just uh, made the broad areas here, the planetary surface morphology. That is, uh, to mean that it is the geomorphology, like geomorphology, this is the surface morphology of the planetary surface. That is one thing very, very important. And particularly for the geography point of view, it is very, very important to understand the geomorphology of the planets and planetary bodies. And then surface uh, material composition, here the both the mineralogical composition and the chemical compositions, those are, uh, is another area of research. And this planetary crust and uh, geological structures, particularly they are the tectonics and the structure, uh, 
uh, different kind of things and uh, different kind of mass wasting phenomena or these denudational phenomena so that is also very very important and finally what is the planetary surface age okay so dating is also important because the samples wherever the samples are available you can have this dating by radiometric dating methods okay there are very important uh, standard dating methods but uh, we can, may not have samples in many places only we have samples of apollo sample return mission so other than this in uh, this your chandrayaan one mission or other similar kind of missions we can have the age of the planetary surface or the lunar surface based on the craters okay the crater size frequency distribution or the power law okay so using the principle of power law you can have the tentative age of the planetary surface i will briefly discuss on that now this lunar morphological and structural features i will not go to the details of that there are mountains there are maria that is very very important that is a large smooth dark areas that is easily visible that is the maria means sea and this is the sea of basalt okay so and why it happens because of the massive impacts okay, because of the large meteors when it is impacted on the lunar surface or the planetary surface then this maria develops okay and the craters is very very important and for today's lecture craters is very very important to us and these are caused by the impacts of meteorites okay so and there are other this your geomorphic features like domes like mass fonts like mass concentration then rills rill is basically they are the trenches of several kilometers wide and these are basically the faults on the planetary surface okay then there are the wrinkle ridges particularly they are of the volcanic origin okay so these are the different geomorphic features you can study okay we are more interested today for the craters okay crater study that is related to different kind of impact craters okay craters can be volcanic also but we are interested mostly on the impact craters because lunar crater is one of the impact crater now impact craters are the most important morphological features to gain insight on the planetary science okay and what is the mechanism okay many of us we basically we know why this and how this this crater develops on the planetary surface or on the terrestrial surface the impact from a very high velocity projectile that generates very large amount of force and uh, when you converts to pressure this is very high magnitude uh, pressure is generated and this pressure uh, creates shock waves and which propagates both into the projectiles that is in the meteor itself and the target okay so based on the number of impact craters and its diameter as i told you in the previous slide the lunar surface age or the planet age of the planetary surface you can uh, determine okay so this for uh, lunar uh, lunar surface it is classified into highland and mare that i told you and the study of the crater's geology and crater morphology and the structure it gives insight about the planetary interior so interior of the planetary bodies and when we are studying the moon so it gives insight about the this moon's interior okay now these craters may be classified into broadly two types okay so one is the simple crater and another is the complex crater and the simple craters where the diameter is less than 15 km okay less than 15 km is a very simple kind of shape generally it is circular in shape but it may not be circular it may be elliptical that depends on the angle of the impact of the uh, this your uh, meteor okay and uh, this crater is relatively flat core but uh, there may be central uplift okay and this slab blocks and the terraces on the inner walls so these walls there can be like this and this other variety of craters are known as the complex craters and these complex craters are more than 15 km in diameter okay and generally complex craters diameter it ranges from 15 to 175 km and when it is larger than that okay when it is more than 175 km then we find this complex ring shaped uh, this uh, uplift in the complex crater and, and uh, sometimes the crater can be very very large okay and it can be of a diameter more than 300 km in that case we do not call them craters anymore we call them basins okay so there are big big basins also in planetary bodies particularly in the moon there are 40 such basins okay so now for this when the crater is very big and when it is a basin 
so much of the material okay so that uh, gives you a lot of molten material okay and this particularly it is generates this uh, your basaltic uh, magma it is come out it comes out and uh, there is a flood vessel sort of thing it can happen all over the basin okay so in the craters much of the material ejected from the crater is deposited in the surrounding the craters okay this is the uh, blanket ejecta we call them okay so close to the crater ejecta is very very thick like you can see as it is close to the crater this ejecta is thick it is same for the lunar crater also as you are very near the lunar crater this is ejecta blanket ejecta is very thick and as you go away from the crater so it is gradually this thickness is reduces okay at large distance it is not also continuous it it becomes the discontinuous uh, this uh, material and here you can see some of the very important uh, okay just one second sometimes okay some of the ejecta fragments okay sometimes what happens with this so when it uh, this uh, meteor impacted on the surface of the planetary body then what happens there are the fragments this uh, uh, come out due to this impact and some of these ejecta uh, the fragments are very large so large that it again it uh, uh, goes to another place is near by place and there will be another impact that is the secondary impact okay so by this secondary impact secondary craters can be developed okay in case of lunar crater people believe that there is a secondary impact okay secondary impact is there and uh, that is the chota lunar uh, crater that is also known as the amber lake okay that has been developed because of the secondary this impact okay but in general in the planetary surface they see your secondary craters okay generally they occur in clusters okay they generally occur in a clusters okay and uh, the shape of these are the and the possible locations of these secondary crater depends on the angle of inclination of the this your uh, your meteor the angle of inclination of the impact now you can see the different uh, types of craters like this is the simple crater this is the complex crater this is the multi ring you can see the multi rings okay and some are degraded craters okay so there are different kind of craters you can see here the entire screen is not visible here as you So it's fine. Full time? No, no. This is it is disturbing the screen. Okay, just one second. I'll just yeah. So you can see here. This is the simple crater. This is the very very complex and very large size crater. And this is the multi ring crater. And here the you can see the boundary of the crater is not regular. but it is very really irregular crater and here the this crater boundary is degraded so it uh, tells you that there are lot of denudational processes or mass shifting processes has operated over this okay this is an example that uh, how this uh, this one of the lunar crater it looks and you can see this is a kind of uh, the this uh, crater this is the taylor crater in the lunar surface and you can see very clearly the central peak and it is imaged by this miniature sensor miniature this micro sensor intensity image okay that is put over the dm and you can see the very interesting uh, this your uh, this your picture of this your crater now i'm coming to spectral analysis of planetary surface i will mostly uh, speak to the lunar surface okay and in planetary surface we we'll discuss on the south pole atkin basin that is the south pole of the moon okay and south pole is very very important for uh, this scientific reason is the largest 
highest and oldest impact bas basin on the moon, this uh, SPA or South Pole Atkin Basin. Okay, and it holds the record of the early cataclysmic bombardment of the moon. Okay, so this is very important to understand this uh, this science behind the inner solar system. Okay, and uh, evolution of the this uh, uh, this your solar system. So for that reason, this uh, your uh, SPA or the South Pole Atkin Basin study is very very important. And you see here the geochemical anomaly that is associated with the SPA basin. It reflects the uh, this uh, composition mostly similar to the lower crust and possibly the upper mantle of the moon. Okay, so because it is very deep, okay, it is very deep. So it gives you not only the this upper crust but also the it goes down to the lower crust and also the upper part of the mantle. Okay, and the surface mineralogy in SPA it holds the key to understand this. So lower crust and crust mantle transition. So that is very very important. Okay, there are many other uh, these your uh, reasons. Okay, so this uh, the data what is available from Chandrayaan one as well as from Chandrayaan two will be very very important. Okay, Chandrayaan one data has been very exhaustively studied. I will give you some of the examples of that. Okay, there are many groups, national and international groups are studying. Okay, I'll give you some examples of that. So here, the spectral analysis. We have uh, selected one of the crater, and uh, uh, that is in the South Pole Atkin Basin. Okay, so this is the location of that particular crater. It is a simple uh, crater. Okay, now we have done the spectral analysis. Uh, is many people have studied this high C, okay, as well as this your SAR2 and uh, MQ. Uh, we are showing here the only the MQ spectral analysis here, okay. And MQ the sensor, you know, it is very very uh, the good sensor because it gives a this continuous range uh, up to 2.5 micrometer from optical the entire range, okay, from 0.4 to 2.5 micrometer range. Uh, the data you can have, okay. And here you see this uh, uh, this your uh, this MQ spectral analysis, and when you compare with the uh, the standard spectral graph, okay, and we find here that the their concentration or enrichment of low calcium, uh, is your pyroxene is very evident here, okay, and uh, most importantly we have studied here the FeO concentration, iron oxide concentration, PiOT concentration, and optical maturity. Optical maturity tells you that when the impact uh, has taken place, okay? Whether it is a crest crater or it is an old crater, so this kind of information you can have. Like high values of optical maturity, you see here is the high value of optical maturity that is giving you with the blue color, okay? At the center of the this crater, okay? It indicates that it is less mature material, okay? That means it is very, very young crater. But as you go out, you see this, this optical maturity reduces. That means you are getting older surface, isn't it? Now, if you see the FeO concentration, the few concentration you see is at the inside of the crater, that is at the center of the crater, this iron concentration is very, very high. Why it is happening? Because this here the crater gives you the information about the lower cost of the metal, upper metal information. So where the FE concentration is very, very high. And you see here PiO2 value is also gives you very, very anomalous, very high PiO2 values are there. So there are TO, TiO2 enriched minerals are very much expected in this particular. Uh, this your area, particularly at the crater center, we get more TiO2 enriched minerals as you go out and on the background of the lunar surface, this TiO2 concentration is much, much less. Now we'll discuss about the this your importance of the microwave sensors. So this advantage of microwave remote sensing is a very much proven in case of terrestrial remote sensing, that is for the sensing of the earth. Here you see this is uh, one uh, these uh, double impact craters on the terrestrial surface. If you see in the optical image, it looks like this. See, but when you see in the micro image, you see this this uh, structure so clear clarity. Okay, so this clarity on the geometry and the subsurface, uh, the structures are very very clear here in micro. And these properties of radar remote sensing for geological studies. Why it is so important? Because it is very sensitive to. Uh, surface geometry, like optical uh, remote sensing, uh, these are nothing looking because it looks vertically down from the satellite. But in case of micro, if it does not look vertically down, it cannot look, okay, because there will be ambiguity. It needs to look at some angle from the vertical, okay, it is side looking, okay, and out northeast. 
okay that is very very important for micro active sensor and it gives you very it uh, very uh, surface geometry getting highlighted and because surface geometry is highlighted it gives you information about the geomorphology so geomorphology is nothing but this uh, this your uh, topographic uh, information of the earth surface okay with the genetics as well so i'm not going to that your uh, definition of geomorphology but uh, geomorphological information and geological structures will be highlighted because it is very very uh, sensitive to surface geometry it is also very sensitive to surface roughness because uh, radar is a uh, active and it is a coherent microwave pulse so because it is very sensitive to surface roughness it gives you good information of about the lithology in case of uh, earth surface where this vegetation cover is not there but you know in case of planetary surface it is nowhere there is vegetation so there is no question of vegetation surface okay so this uh, surface roughness is is very very important for understanding the this your rock types the planetary surface okay so that radar gives you this information very much then it is very sensitive to moisture content that is dielectric property okay so that is why it gives you information about the regolith or uh, it gives you information about the presence of water if any but water in case of planetary surface you know it does not uh, it is not available as a liquid water but it is mostly as a volatile okay water rise stage okay so that is again another area of research okay and uh, this uh, radar remote sensing is very important because it penetrate uh, ground so you get subsurface information like regolith layers like faults or fractures study also you can do here you see one important terrestrial craters okay so it is in namibia you see in terrestrial crater uh, when we merge optical okay false color composite all of you have seen it is an hybrid false color composite okay okay and uh, it is microwave active sensor so it is uh, merged together so you can see the spectral information or color of the objects and also you can get the geometrical information like structural hills like here geomorphic uh, landforms you can see here this the geomorphic landforms is very your elongated landforms these are nothing but these are the longitudinal dunes these longitudinal dunes you can see very clearly because here radar image is merged with the optical image but if you see only the optical image that is the false color composite you won't be able to see this similarly you see because radar can penetrate the ground you can see the buried channel okay that is the channel which is covered but it is occurring near surface so buried or channel or paleo channels you can see and most importantly this impact crater you see the crater boundary is very very prominent crater boundary is so prominent because it is side looking okay so these are the information many information you can extract from this okay now coming to the lunar surface in the north pole and south pole this uh, most of the area it has been covered only few years are left okay and uh, many of the craters over 30 craters in the north pole we see there are some anomalous this behavior we see anomalous behavior in terms of the water availability okay there there is one micro a parameter okay for this polarimetric parameter is there that is known as circular polarization ratio okay that is uh, available for the circular uh, polarized electromagnetic uh, wave or microwave uh, this your radiation so this cpr gives you information about the possible presence of water ice when there is the cpr value is very very high anomalously high then we can suspect that there may be water ice is available in this particular crater so we find number of craters in the north pole okay i'm not going to the much details we have uh, other areas to address now in the south pole also we are getting similar kind of uh, craters but the number of these anomalous craters are less anomalous in terms of the presence of water ice okay so are less lesser than the north pole now in case of chandrayaan 1 micro mini sat data it is available uh is very four channels okay and i am not going to the details of the data again because uh, that will not be possible and also not required what i wanted to tell that it is a circular polarization to linear polarization data okay and uh, from that uh, what we can generate we generate the stokes vectors okay stokes vectors okay so we send circular polarized transmit get pulse and we get a linear polarized horizontal and vertical polarized uh, return pulse okay that is how we get from the this chandrayaan 1 minisat data and from that we generate four stokes vector 
that is S0, S1, S2, and S3, four Stokes vectors. From that, we can derive the Stokes child parameters, okay? That is in the next slide, I'll discuss. And now from this, your, this, your, uh, your, uh, your uh, intensity, this LH and L, we can generate the sigma naught or backscatter, uh, backscattering coefficient or this backscatter cross section sigma LH and sigma LB. So that is calculated like this. And in case of North Pole, South Pole and Equator, this is the range of the, the sigma naught value or the backscattered, backscattering coefficient value. That tells you about the uh, this surface roughness, surface geometry. And in case of uh, earth surface, it also tells you about the this your water availability or soil moisture availability. But you know, in case of lunar surface, that is available only at the uh, deep inside the crater. Okay, so it is not readily available on the lunar background. Okay, so mostly it tells you this about the surface roughness and the surface geometry or the geomorphology. Uh, of the uh, these lunar craters, and this is the range you can see. Wherever there are the more deflection takes place, there the, the return will be more. And these are the this your Stokes child parameters. That is the degree of polarization, circular polarization ratio. And there are many more parameters, and the very important three parameters are very very important, like degree of polarization, circular polarization ratio tells you about the uh, this uh, possible presence of water ice or not. And this uh, relative, uh, this your phase difference, LHLB phase difference. So these are important. Okay. Now we have taken some sample locations in North Pole and South Pole, and some locations in the equator, and then we have studied. And based on this study, you can see here we found very high CPR values in many of the craters. But high CPR value, okay, is not does not always tell. It is the CPR figure. Okay, you see in the inside the crater. Red is high value. You see the CPR value is high at many places. Okay, but high CPR does not always tell you that there is water is available. It can be also because of the press uh, this your rock fragments. Okay, because of the angular rock fragments also you can get this high CPR value. So it is not unambiguous. So for that reason, we need to study other parameters also. We have studied here this degree of polarization. We also find this degree of polarization is also very, very low. You see degree of polarization, DOP and DOLP, degree of linear polarization. As you go inside the crater, you see the degree of polarization is very, very low. That means that the return wave is not polarized. So it gets depolarized. When it gets depolarized, when there is diffuse scattering takes place. And when there will be diffuse scattering, when there will be Water ice, presence of water ice, dielectric inhomogeneity inside the material. When there is volume scattering will take place, okay? That means water ice inside the material is available, okay? So this low degree of polarization and high CPR possibly tells that uh, there may be water ice inside the craters and only the selective locations, not everywhere, okay? But uh, there are little more, uh, this your advanced study is required that we have done. In the next slide, I'll show that. And here you see there are double bounds. You see the very red patch of this. Why this is happening? Because the transmitted pulse is coming from the right side. If the transmitted pulse is coming from the right side. It reflects back from the, the crater. Okay. So this crater on the left side, this crater slope on the left side. So it reflects the this your transmitted pulse. So it's a lot of reflection, a lot of radar return takes place. Okay. That is why you are getting very high return and you are getting this anomalously, this red uh, color on the one side of the crater. Now you see that uh, uh, if you study this, your, this, uh, your surface uh, from the microwave data, if you study what are the uh, scattering takes place. So we have decomposed into surface and volume and double bond scattering. And you know, in case of regolith, which is the loose unconsolidated material, loose soil, isn't it? So if, because it is a loose soil kind of material, so there, here, the, uh, this radar pulse can go very easily inside this material, and then it can come back. So a lot of volume scattering will take place, OK? So this crater floor, there are a lot of regolith is there in the crater floor, loose materials, OK? Soil-like material will be there. So that is why it gives you a high, this volume scattering, OK? Whereas if you see the crater center, that is the central oblique or the central peak, here you see that both surface scattering as well as volume scattering are equally good, equally strong. 
Whereas if you go this uh, the outside the crater, you see here the volume scattering is also there and surface scattering is also there. Okay, uh, sorry, this your double bound scattering is there. But double bound should be the maximum if you go the this your sides of the craters. Okay. Now there's a little more advanced studies we have done. CPR degree of polarization. In addition to that, we have also studied this polarimetric decomposition and. Uh, with the polarimetric decomposition, we can tell that uh, more uh, your authentically, we can say that that water ice is present in some of the, uh, the craters. And you know, this is one of the most important findings of the Chandrayaan-1 mission. That is the first mission, global first mission, that has for the first time discovered this or confirmed that water ice or water is present in the moon. But the water is not present like the this terrestrial water. It is available as a water ice, volatile state, deep inside the crater. Okay. Now, this is the salient achievement of the Chandrayaan 1 minister. I'm not going to that because we have less time. Okay. So, to almost 90% of the polar regions it has studied, the non polar areas also it has studied. Okay. And many of the things what I have discussed, I have briefly this uh, listed here. Okay. Most importantly, geomorphology, geological structure. Okay. And this uh, your uh, your surface uh, uh, morphology, okay, surface roughness properties. Those things have been studied from the micro synthetic oscillator. In case of Chandrayaan two, that is now in orbit. Okay, the data will be available is in processing now at this moment. So it has two your uh, frequency antenna, dual frequency L band and S band SAR antenna is there. Okay, so. It has capabilities, more capabilities. Well, because L band has a longer wavelength, so it can penetrate more. And most importantly, because it is also full polarimetric. In case of Chandrayaan one, it was not full polarimetric; it was compact polarimetric SAR. But in this case, Chandrayaan two, it is full polarimetric as well as it is compact polarimetric. Both the polarimetry is available, and it has a very large incident angle range. So that will give you wide variety of information and. Uh, here, a very important point is that fine to coarse resolution data it will uh, provide, and that is very, very important for large scale too. Large scale means you know that uh, your very finer, this your mapping, finer mapping of the objects, uh, smaller objects even you can do because you can go even up to two meter as well as global mapping, that is the regional mapping also. Okay. Now, that is another important this your. Uh, Area of planetary study is the uh, your planetary surface edge detection, surface edge determination. Uh, that is done indirectly by crater boundary detection. And from this crater boundary, we can have the crater size, okay, crater diameter, and the number of craters per unit area. That gives you the, the size frequency distribution. So size of the craters and the frequency of the craters per unit area. But the crater size determination is not very easy. No, first you have to uh, delineate the boundary of the craters, and the boundaries are not well defined at many places. So that is why there are some advanced processing is required. We did here image segmentation. Okay, this is a TMC image, terrain mapping camera image. So from this, we have done some advanced image segmentation, half transform, and uh, wavelet uh, this your decomposition, and uh, finally we get very very uh, your uh, boundary very precise. And from that, you can get the uh, crater boundary well. Similarly, for uh, microwave also, mini such data also, we did the similar kind of exercise, okay? This half transform and wavelet uh, decomposition, and you see here, this crater boundary is very much highlighted. And uh, then what we do? Also, the, from the DEM, you can do very nicely. The crater, you can delineate. That is very important image processing technique, okay? This is... Uh, Image segmentation is done. This is GMC DM. Okay, so here this crater boundary you can uh, delineate, and after this crater boundary uh, is delineated, then uh, this crater boundary can be uh, detected well. There are some automated technique. Okay, and there are some advanced image processing techniques like moment measure technique. Okay, sometimes uh, there are some automated technique. Assume that the craters are circular. Okay, there is a crater tools. It is uh, available freely, downloadable tools. So these crater tools, using crater tools, you can just get this size of the craters. Okay, 
but you can have some advanced uh, these your techniques by that you can uh, address the exact shape of the craters the crater may not be circular as you see the craters are not exactly circular it may be a little bit elliptical as well so based on some advanced image processing techniques image analysis rather techniques like movement measure techniques so we assume that it is close to the elliptical objects and then we have calculated the longer axis and to the shorter axis okay like lunar crater is not also exactly circular you know? okay now from the size of the craters and from the frequency of the craters this is based on the power law you can get the age of the craters this is known as the this size frequency distribution uh, curve okay so you can study on that there are very uh, this research is very very uh, this uh, you developed and uh, people are getting the age tentative age of the planetary surface in case of lunar surface we did it and we got the age of the uh, this uh, north pole and south pole okay and we have compared also with the uh, available age uh, usgs by that is given by usgs but there are some kind of correction is required some kind of refinement is required particularly uh, the craters what you are taking into account for this age determination the crater needs to be all primary craters and the crater boundary should be precisely delineated so two things are very very important so for Delineating the crater boundary very precisely. That I told uh, in the previous slide. I discussed how we can do that. Okay, by advanced image processing and image analysis techniques. Now, if there are secondary craters, also you have taken into account, so that you have to avoid. You have to remove those. So, how you will identify the secondary craters? So that there are certain characteristics of the secondary craters. They occur in some clusters, and there are some distribution. Okay. so geometry of the distribution like a tail like distribution we will find okay so from that you can identify the secondary craters and secondary craters will be much smaller than the primary craters like chota lona rimo is much smaller than the this crater okay but there is still there is some uh, doubt whether the chota lona is a secondary crater or there is something else okay so i do not want to comment on that and here you see here this uh, secondary craters we have uh, removed and finally we get the edge so that is what i wanted to show this is your lunar crater and this is the total lunar or uh, total lunar or amber lake okay now as you compare this edge okay you see the from the crater tool that is the uh, automated tool is available and you can download it and you can do this edge determination okay this is the edge what we get by automated technique but a crater tool technique but if we adopt some automated technique with uh, advanced image analysis technique then we can refine the edge okay but that's refinement gives you a little bit different from this your crater tool edge and it is more precise and more accurate edge now if you compare this with ugs map edge and you can see that it is well within the range what ugs has given for the lunar surface this is for the north pole and this is for the south pole okay because this usgs map this age is quite wide ranging ages here and we are getting the age which is little refined you see from the crater tool and this automated technique what we adopted there are some good amount of refinement we can see here now coming to this lunar crater that is the this crater uh, in the country and uh, this is the most important crater in uh, india Okay, it is the only and globally also it is very very important because it is the only oil preserved simple crater on the earth in continental flood basin. You can have these uh, these crater like uh, bodies or craters, uh, smaller size craters. You can find in Brazil there are three such craters you can find, but much smaller size. Okay, but this is very well defined simple crater in continental flood basin. so it uh, excavated this decantra basalts of uh, this edge it is such to see the edge and you see here the maximum length is 1.83 meter but the area is 1.13 km square so it is not exactly circular and it is 137 meter deep and it is a saline lake as is already is, uh, this speaker has told and it's a saline lake and it is the maximum depth is 150 meter okay there are other craters in uh, india there's the dhala crater okay in sipuri district of madhya pradesh and this is a little larger crater 11 km but it is not so well defined as the lunar crater is here the basement is granitoids 
okay and the, it is very old that is why the boundary is not well defined it is boundary is very very degraded we have studied on dhala crater also along with this elabad university okay now ramgarh crater okay it is uh, recently there are studies that it is uh, uh, your ambiguously it is an impact crater that is studied uh, by this your uh, recently by the researchers this is found in the baran district of rajasthan ramgarh crater and it is the uh, this 3.5 km is the diameter okay and it is in the sandstone this is the country rocks here and the lunar crater is important because it's the only impact crater on the art which is formed in a basaltic terrain and that is very similar to the lunar mare regions okay so it can act as a the lunar analog crater okay and that is why it is ideal for testing some of the payloads of the isro this your planetary missions particularly the lunar missions okay and uh, lunar is emplaced in a flat lying basalt okay this previous study is already discussed that this is a very good lunar analog but it is also uh, uh, Certain aspects are there in case of lunar crater, and it is very much comparable to the this previous crater of the Mars. That is, the studies also some of the studies also show that uh, this crater also similar to some of the craters of the Mars. So, for it can also act as a Martian analog. Okay, so along with the lunar analog, as people uh, consider it must be, particularly in the Mare region, these craters are seen. Impact cratering is one of the important geological processes that have modified the surface of all planets and satellite of our solar system. Okay, so now this map of this mineralogical assemblage of the lunar crater is very very important for understanding the this uh, geological evolution of the moon. Okay, and the lunar crater particularly it is important because it is very young. No, you know it is the age is a uh, fifty two thousand year. Okay, so it is very very young and well preserved. the boundary is well defined very well preserved simply crater okay you can see here that is this nearly 50000 years ago and a meteorite of about 100 meters diameter okay it impacted about 100 meters diameter impacted and it is believed that it was having it was it has weight of a few million tons uh, this uh, meteorite was impacted that hit the deccan uh, plateau okay and the speed of this uh, meteorite was uh, around 18 km per second okay and the, the collision of this uh, meteorite generated such in intense heat okay because of this intense heat and pressure no this uh, this a uh, molten pool of material was developed okay so it is estimated that the heat generated by this impact was around 6 megaton bomb okay this molten mass of rocks together with the some unmelted material it was thrown out by the rebound force okay with this some of these uh, fragments ejecta fragments and some molten material it was thrown out and there are many kind of geological changes happen like metamorphism partial melting then there are metamorphism shock particularly shock metamorphism high pressure mineral okay and also including this instantaneous formation of glass because very high temperature and suddenly cooled up so this instant formation of glass beads and this shattered bones so with the presence of this kind of material glass beads it has uh, very much observed in uh, lunar crater and the shattered bones so, so one can say that uh, this particular crater uh, has been developed due to impact we can see it is not a volcanic crater. okay here you can see this is the this lunar crater lake area and this is the your slope okay and this is the blanket ejecta where the thickness is maximum near the crater boundary and thickness reduces as you go away okay so here we have studied this lunar crater some studies we have done here 56 rock and soil samples we collected okay with our students so number of students what we have visited this lunar crater uh, uh, number of times and we have done some spectral analysis okay so by this uh, ast spectrometer analytical spectral uh, radiometer okay these samples that we collected and very different areas we have collected the samples okay so and we have compared with the uh, this your standard spectral curves and we have get some kind of similarity of mapping pressure mapping 
uh, and Ruto site is not very much comparable, but uh, mapping result is very much comparable. Okay, but uh, uh, very very uh, this your uh, definitively identification of the individual minerals we could not uh, achieve because we have worked only for limited time. We need to work much more, and there are many people are working with that. Okay, other than uh, our group. Okay, and ISRO is also in ISRO. Also, there are uh, another other groups are are working. Okay, so you can have more information on the literature as well. Now, this is you can see that is the vegetation information, and you can see this is the exposed to rock and soil, and you can see this is the this MNF, okay, minimum noise fraction, okay, five, four, and three. It tells you some your mineralogical differences, mineralogical diversity. Okay, now the individual mineral mapping needs to be done. Okay, we have also attempted some micro FSR uh, study. Okay, here uh, similar to to this mini mini sir in case of uh, moon, we have studies here radar imaging satellite that was launched in two thousand eight for the Earth surface. Okay, terrestrial sensing. This is also have uh, this uh, pool polarization, linear polarization, as well as it has also similar to mini sir data. It has circular polarization, rather compact polarization data. So you see here the standard linear polarization HH and HB image. You can see how this lunar crater looks, and this is your basically the RH and RB. This is the transmitted part is the right circular, and the received or return pole is the horizontal polarized linear, horizontal polarized linear horizontal polarized image and vertical polarized image. Okay, so this is basically compact polarization images, and you can see this is the. So there are some further studies we are doing. So we maybe uh, there are more studies we need to do, and after that we'll come with uh, more exhaustive, more, more uh, your definitive, uh, more uh, your authentic information. Because whatever the intermediate uh, studies uh, that we are not uh, going to show you, it is not going to give you very uh, the definitive information. So with that, I uh, conclude. And uh, these mysteries are unlimited, particularly for the lunar crater. I personally, I have visited and I have uh, initiated the study. And I have also uh, visited with uh, Dr. Atul Jete. And uh, Dr. Atul Jete, I uh, was uh, also uh, he did some posts at IIRS also, and uh, uh, we both have the opportunity to work together. We both have the opportunity to work together at IRS as well as uh, we have the joint visit in and around the lunar crater. And uh, uh, Dr. Atul Jete is working uh, mostly in lunar crater. He has a lot of explorations he, have, he has done. Uh, he has been working for many years on lunar crater. So these all the mysteries, there are many mysteries. Some of the mysteries I believe, I strongly believe that uh, will be unfolded by Dr. Atul Jete. So that is the lecture. After the foundation, I have uh, tried to make a foundation for the planetary studies and the linkage of the uh, lunar crater. Thank you for your present hearing. And uh, yes, if you have any questions, now or later on, after Dr. Ratujit's lecture is over, I am available uh, to. Okay, sir. Thank you. I am very much thankful to Dr. Chatterjee, sir, for talking Chandrayaan, Mangalayaan, Chandrayaan 2 and planetary system and in detail about craters, its morphology and significance of craters on planets, as well as impact craters, significance in planetary size. He also discussed about different craters. Sir, very, uh, I am very much thankful to you for your wonderful speech. Sir has given very resourceful talk. Uh, Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank uh, you. We have a little bit change in the program. Now, President of Shiv Chhatrapati Shikshan Samstha and Chairperson of this session, Dr. Honorable Dr. Goparaj Patil sir will address the seminar. Now, may I request Dr. Saheb, please address the audience. Hello. Last one.
विकास आवाज येतोय का विकास नाउ मे आय रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर साहेब विल ऍड्रेस द सेमिनार हॅलो विकास हा बोला आपण इथे आवाज येते बोला नाव मी आय रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर गोपाळराव पाटील साहेब टू ऍड्रेस द सेमिनार अनेक <laughs>
दड़वी सर दड़वी सर डॉक्टर साहब टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम है आवाज ये नहीं तो क्या करा आतुल सर सुरू करा बाकी अतुल जेठे सर a uh, brief introduction of jete sir special training taken in irs isro research interest applied geomorphology remote sensing working as assistant professor in geography city bar of aleshur dist pune a uh, project research student of dr rs chatterji sir doing research on lunar crater since from last 12 years published 24 research paper in high impact factor and reputed research journals student of rajarshi shahu uh, mahavidyalaya atul jete sir is a former student of our college it is our pride now may i request dr atul jete sir to talk on uh, specially lona lake atul jete sir hello everyone very good afternoon to everybody i am dr atul jethe from city bora college shirur district pune here i will deliver my presentation on lunar crater lake a mystery of science i would like to thank principal dr gavane sir and dr shahpurkar sir and their organizing committee for giving me an opportunity to share my knowledge with you through this seminar i would also like to thank my project research guide respected dr chatterjee sir for always motivating and inspiring me to make the quality research on this topic now i uh, share my screen with you a uh, lunar crater lake a mystery of science impact crater has gained attention throughout the world the the large impact event caused the extinction about 70% of living species including the dinosaurs approximately 65 million years ago what is meant by impact crater Uh, an impact crater is a circular depression on surface usually referring to a planet moon asteroid or other celestial body caused by collision of a smaller body that is meteor with the face so this is a meteor meteoroid that is observed as a as it burns up in the earth's atmosphere is called as meteor so this process of deep collision of smaller body meteor with the surface we can understood how the energy released from that when a small meteor enters the earth's atmosphere it burns the meteor temperature can reach as high as 4000 degree fahrenheit or more than 2500 degree celsius it can be energy more than eight times of nuclear atomic bomb and biodiversity of the earth can be destroyed because of the deep impact so this we know very well that in between mars and jupiter there is a asteroid belt so these are the meteorites which are located in that asteroid belt these are some of the important terms related to uh, my subject so asteroid is nothing but that is a large rocky body found in between the mars and jupiter then meteorite is nothing but that is a smaller fragment of asteroid 
outside of the Earth's atmosphere that is found in the space. Then meteor, meteor is that event, a meteoroid that is burns up in the atmosphere is called as meteor. And the, the remaining fragments that make it to the surface of the Earth is called as meteoroid. The smaller meteor cannot comes to the Earth it burns up in the atmosphere due to the high friction of the atmosphere. So the meteorite or the meteor are the easier to suit, show uh, during uh, the night time. These are the process of meteor formation. So we can categorize that process it into the six stages. When the meteor stuck to the earth surface, then shock waves generates, then the second stage that, that is the end contact compression stage, shock waves and material flow down direction and ejecta blanket formation. Uh, in the third stage, excavation stage, it vaporizes and some meteoric part melt downward direction and ejecta blows outward direction. Then meteor can be vaporized in the end excavation stage and transit cavity can be generated. And the fifth stage can be uh, uh, modification stage, the fracture rock generates. And in the end stage, final crater formation, that stage, brescia collects at the foot of the crater. So looking to this uh, image, you can understood how uh, the meteor crater formation, formation occurs. So the finally it can produce shutter, uh, shutter cones at the end and it shuttles down. So observation of the shock evidence, when the meteor crater, uh, meteoric crater forms, that shutter cones, just like of shutter cones develops, the conical fractures with the typical marking produced by shock waves, then shock material, shock cords, high pressure minerals, and then melt rocks uh, may be result from the shock and the frictions. So this is, this is the largest ever meteoroids fo found on the Earth's surface that is in Huba, Namibia, Africa. There are two types of crater. One is volcanic crater and another is a meteorologic crater. We know both are the circular in uh, formation, but in volcanic uh, crater, that volcanic crater we found on the conical hill at the top of the conical hill. But meteorologic crater occurs at the uh, surface of the Earth's surface and such type of the ring or ejecta blanket formation. The right hand side image is a Behringer meteoric crater of Arizona state of USA. So where do we find craters? Uh, craters? Earlier uh, session of Dr. Arish Chatterjee this, uh, analyzed about these all meteoric craters where Mercury, Venus, Moon, Earth, Mars, and asteroids. So of uh, Dr. Arish Chatterjee, we know uh, Dr. Arish Chatterjee, he's a senior scientist in uh, IRS ISRO. His contribution is that he delineated the precise crater boundaries of mass impact craters by using the segmentation techniques. Then he studied about the, these five craters of Mars from the lunar crater lake. He studied about the satellite derived digital topography based crater boundary detection and attribute measurement by the segmentation and monument, monument measures techniques. Also from the lunar crater lake, the same crater of that moon impact crater, which is a lunar two crater, which is similar to lunar crater, also studied by the IIRS. So looking to this image, we can come to know on the Earth's surface, there are 198 uh, impact craters are there. So the, these are the location of Im Indian impact craters the probable uh, uh, impact craters in India, as like lunar crater, there is a uh, Dhala crater, which is located in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, there is Ramgad crater, which is uh, uh, located in uh, Rajasthan. And there is again the Luna crater, which is uh, located in Gujarat. And Alwar is another one of the probable impact crater, and it is located in Rajasthan uh, state. So location and silent features of Indian impact craters. Lonar, we know that very well. Lonar is located in Buldhana district of Maharashtra. The formation year is 52,000 years and the diameter is near about 
1,800 meters. Then Ramgarh is located in Baran district of Rajasthan. The formation year is 50,000 years and the diameter is 550 meters. And the Dhala is the biggest one. The diameter is having 11,000 meters and the formation year is 2,500 million years before, which is located in Sipuri district of Madhya Pradesh. And the Luna is located in Kutch of Gujarat. The formation year is near about 4,000 years and the diameter is 530 meters. Alwar is an, another one which is located in Alwar district of Rajasthan. The diameter is very small, that is 220 meters and the formation year is 3,000 uh, years. So this is the location of uh, uh, Lonar Crater Lake, which is located in Lonar Tarsil of Buldana district, Lonar Crater Lake. The green color of the uh, western uh, part of the peninsula shows that the Deccan traps, the Lonar is located in between, uh, that is in uh, uh, located in Godavari drainage basin. Northern side, there is Penganga River, whereas southern side having Purna River of right hand tributary of Godavari. Then this, this lunar crater, the distance from Mumbai is 553 kilometer. From Hyderabad, it is, it is 475 kilometer. From Pune, it is 401 kilometer. From Aurangabad, it is 140 kilometer. And from Jalna, it is nine, uh, 98 kilometer. And from Buldana, it is 80 kilometer. So these are the some of the contribution uh, of, of scientist contribution of uh, about Lonar Crater Lake. Initially, Lonar Crater Lake was thought to be a volcanic crater. During the nine, uh, 1964, the debate was started. Lonar Crater and Astroblame or Geoblame. First of all, the crater was first discovered by British officer C. J. E. Alexander in 1823. Then, D.K. Gilbert, uh, uh, he is a geologist uh, uh, in uh, 1896, he showed the similarity in between Behringer Meteor Crater, which is located in Arizona state of USA, and Lunar Crater, which is located in our India, in Buldana district of Maharashtra. He shown the similarity in between the two craters. And then, K. Fredrickson uh, from Smithsonian Institute, he uh, has hey, hey, done a lot of study on hey, that. Hey, so this is the uh, lunar crater. About lunar crater, uh, it is also mentioned in the ancient scriptures like Skanda Purana, Padma Purana, Aine Akbari, and Raghuvamsha of Kalidasa. Kalidasa in his Raghuvamsha expressed about lunar crater lake as like Chandravaril Khargyasi Samme Jayashi Jule Tehe Lunar Che Khara Pana Che Tale. It is known uh, in uh, Raghuvamsha, he called about Lonar Crater as a Punjab, sir, because there are few uh, springs are uh, in there uh, inside of the Lonar Crater. On the basis of that, uh, Kalidasa <laughs> Express uh, uh, called <laughs> crater as a Punjab, sir, crater, and also <laughs> in the uh, scriptures is about <laughs> Lonar Crater, Viraj Tirtha. So about Lonar Crater, Lonar Crater is located at uh, 19 degree 59 minutes north latitude to 76 degree 31 minutes east longitude. It is only hyper velocity natural impact crater, which is the biggest in basaltic rock in the world. The speed of the that meter was 25 kilometer per second. The weight was 20 lakh ton. The energy released from that uh, a 1,800 degrees Celsius, size was near about 55 meters and that energy was six megaton nuclear bomb. And the crater's age is previously told it is a 50,000 years, but although the study published in 2010, then NASA suggested that the age of that crater is 5,70,000 years. The presence of masculinite, brescia, Shutter cones and ejecta blankets surrounding to the crater all supports the impact origin of Lonar Lake. The meteor impact came from the east at an angle of 35 degree to 40 degree. It is notified as a National Geo Heritage Monument in 1979 and the area of 
3.83 square kilometer was declared as wildlife sanctuary in November 2015, and in in 2018 it is declared as uh, UNESCO declared uh, has given its World Heritage status. Now it is a bowl shaped simple impact crater. The diameter is uh, west to east. Uh, diameter is 1,830 meters, whereas north to south diameter is 1,700 meters. Depth of the crater is 150 meters, and the depth of the water which is present in the crater is 5 to 7 meters. So height from the mean sea level of the rim is 610 meters, and eject ice spread from the rim is 2 kilometer. So it is very highly super saline and alkaline lake. So this is a, uh, a topo sheet, SY topo sheet, one is to uh, 25,000, 50, uh, 56A by 9 Northwest, shows the geomorphic zones or the segmentation of lunar crater. The, there are five zones or segments of lunar crater. First is the outmost, outermost ejecta blanket. Then uh, this is the outermost ejecta blanket. The second is the crater rim. Then uh, third is the slope of, or the free face slope of the crater. Then fourth is the crater basin, excluding lake. And fifth is the cr crater lake. This is the fifth crater lake. So this is the IRS list three satellite image. So on the, on the basis of Landsat ETM seven image, this is a lunar crater lake. And this is a lunar city established at the ejecta blanket of the lunar crater. This is the little lunar or it is called as a umber crater. This is the depression north of the crater that is also called as a little lunar. And this is the Kundapal Dam. Here it is again one of the small crater and the name has given Kagan crater. So inside the red color shows, this is the dense jungle which is present inside of the lunar crater. And towards the northeast side, there is a delta, which has, uh, because due to the uh, fault line that delta is present inside of the lunar crater. So this east to west cross section of the lunar crater shows the, uh, uh, the slope of the crater towards the west side, uh, west side of the crater, there is very steep slope. So accessibility uh, towards the east west side is very low accessibility. Towards the east side, the slope is somewhat gentle. So towards the east side, the accessibility is very high. So these are the some of the zones of the lunar crater. First zone, this is the first zone, uh, zone first. It is a solo near Sur Lake zone. Then zone second is the eastern part of the lake at the stream mouth. And the third zone is a deep sub to anosic, anosic part of the lake. These are the some of the research questions and the major objectives of my study. The, whether, uh, the research questions are whether the lunar crater lake an astroblame or geoblame. Then, why the lunar crater lake is ecologically very unique in the world. Then why did lunar crater lake suddenly transform green to pink color? How we can determine the depositional environment inside of the crater? Why it is important to conserve the ejecta blanket of the lunar crater lake? So these are the some of the research questions on the basis of that. These are the some of the major objectives of my uh, this study to study the ecological and geomorphic various dimensions of the lunar crater lake. To study the depositional environment inside of the lunar crater lake. And then to ascertain the reasons behind the changing color of the lunar crater lake. And to study the environmental problems of lunar crater lake. So these are the some of the characteristics of the lunar crater lake. Lunar crater lake is the Earth's largest and only, only hypervelocity impact crater in basaltic rock of, rock of Deccan Plateau in central Maharashtra. A landlocked water body, the lunar lake supports the microorganisms 
which is rarely found elsewhere on the earth the slope of around the lake has multiple rings of trees the first and outermost ring of the lake forms and it is followed by ring of terminal trees and then another ring of babul trees the lake and its ecosystem is a home to wide variety of migratory and resident birds up, apart from the langurs gazelles and chikaras the lonar lake is named after the demon launasura and it is ringed by fascinating temples including one with its erotic sculptures reminiscing of khajuraho then lonar lake is notified as a national geo heritage and popular trekking destination previously it was 500 meters deep but now it has become 150 meters deep due to the mass wasting debris flow and alluvial deposition ph is very high it is near about 10.5 and total digital solid inside of the water is 100 and, uh, sorry 1500 parts per million per liter so these are the some of the various aspects of the lunar crater lake one can study the meteor and inside of the interior part as a geological angle then geomorphology it is the science about the uh, morphology the, that means the structure of this uh, crater one can study according to geomorphology then archaeological point of view whatever the material present inside of the crater one can study about, according to that so historical point of view history inside there are number of temples are there so one can study temple architecture then iconography is about the murti shastra which which are present in the that temple architecture this is declared as a uh, heritage national heritage so one can study according to that then ornithology means whatever the bird present inside the crater one can study according to that point of view then recently it is declared as a national sanctuary 2018 so this is very important flora fauna and micro bio life so flora botanical point of view one can study botanical point of view fauna that is zoological point of view microbiological point of view then the whatever the water present inside of the lunar crater that changes varies uh, surprisingly so one can study according to chemistry point of view then this is a very important tourism center then morphological point of view one can study then astronomical point of view and meteorological point of view one can study about this lunar crater so these are the gsi 10 digits code of lunar crater lake the 10 digit uh, 3111 13111 this 10 digits tells about the lunar crater lake the four first four digit is a uh, western part of peninsula express about the western part of peninsula three Uh, digit tells about the indian peninsula the next one digit tells the, its uniqueness that is outstanding universal value the next one digit depicts about the scientific out intrinsic value of a lunar crater lake the next one digit tells about the high tourist value of lunar crater lake and the next 13 that means that is iucn number that is meteorologic impact the international union for nature of conservation theme or meteorology impact and the last four digit that is 111 and 1 tells about first one tells about accessibility it is a very highly accessible place then next one tells about the state prevention gsi monument wildlife sanctuary that is proper post then potential threat is uh, 1000 meter uh, from the rim crater it is declared as a eco sensitive zone and the last digit tells about the geomorphology or biodiversity of the sorry geomorphological diversity of that particular spot so this is the uh, land use land cover map of the lunar crater this yellow color shows that total part is agricultural uh, agricultural cover part inside of the lunar crater that delta was previously was a agriculture part but now it is declared as a national sanctuary that agriculture is uh, shifted towards another side then this is the lunar 
uh, village or lona settlement which is located on ejecta blanket and this is a scrubbing area which is uh, ejecta blanket of lona crater this is kundapal or uh, uh, dam or devul gaon dam and this is, these are the uh, roads of that uh, particular area so this this map shows the some of the geomorphic pro processes which is uh, present inside there are number of gullies and nalas that means that gullies erodes material towards the downward direction debris flow occurs then this dhar which is a north east side uh, that, that gullivel and alluvial delta forms towards the north east side and this is lonar crater lake so in the next uh, this slide we can understood the Uh, this is delta which is a composite alluvial and colluvial fan which is located north east side of the lonar crater lake so this is a because of it occurs due to the fluvial erosion and continuous ejecta blanket uh, that therefore that the uh, this uh, uh, delta is form inside of the lonar crater lake so ecosystem is totally disturbed in this uh, feature of the delta because of the human interference so this is this is the lonar crater rim and the slope segment uh, in this image we can understood the the slope towards the north east side so alluvial and colluvial material that is bhabar which is at the, at the front of the dhar valley the boulders which is collected towards the north east side so these are this is this crater is the centripetal and centrifugal drainage system is present from the rim to outward direction there is a centrifugal drainage system is there and from the, the rim to in, inside of the lake there is a a centripetal drainage system there are uh, 20 nalas and rills are there so this is the natural spring uh, which are potable inside of the lonar crater lake then one of the interesting thing is that the this is the saline water inside of the lonar crater saline and alkaline soda water but inside of the there is a pakka whale that pakka whale is having sweet water so this is the north east side ejecta blanket that slope of this ejecta blanket is covered with small trees and bushy vegetation which is having somewhat deciduous one they avoid the soil erosion of the soil into the lake and this is the basin and beach of the lake one of the interesting is the a uh, interesting thing is that if you dig a pit from uh, uh, some of the distance from this saline lake away from the lake uh, after the 30 meters it yields the sweet and potable water in it so this is a uh, architectural uh, which is architectural structure which is present inside of the lunar in the temples so there are a uh, number of temples are there inside of the lunar crater there are 15 temples they here it is a dhara temple group uh, then uh, he, he pap harishwar temple is there then it, there is a shukracharya shala then uh, shankar ganesh temple ram ram gaya temple is there bag mahadev temple mor mahadev temple is there then uh, towards the west side there is kamlaja devi temple is there uh, most of the temples are mahadev temples uh, uh, then this is the ambar khana temple mungla mahadev temple is there and chopra mahadev temple and these are the observe four observation points towards the west side uh, two observation points are there and towards the east side there are two uh, observation points are there so these are the temples which are very beautiful temple uh, te uh, temples inside of the lonar crater lake which are uh, of 12th century that uh, temples are himarpantian temples so one of the interesting thing is there is a in the village of the lunar there is a adaitya sudan temple which is which having the which is a beautiful carving it is located in the heart of the lunar village the vishnu temple is the best example of himarpanti style of art and it bears resemblance with magic arts of khajuraho which has amazing sculptures Daitya Sudan Temple has 184 beautiful carvings, just like as a Khajuraho. So these are the ancient and rare temples which are present in the Lunar Crater Lake. These are the remnants parts of old temples. So, archaeologists discovered inside of the crater 
860 types of migratory as well as local birds in the Lonar Crater Lake. So we have conducted some of the field work to understand the depositional environment inside of the crater. So crater basin is having dense jungle, mixed working forest are there. There is a high humidity level inside of the crater because this farmer wears the less closes. So narrow strip is there in between the shoreline and the rim of the crater. So the west side of the crater having floor having less accessibility and inside of the jungle, epiphytes and parasites are also available. So the sandy and silty lake shoreline beach. So the lunar lake silt has histosol seals. The four types of the seals are present inside of the crater. Back colloidal seal, then brown plastic seal, brown lace plastic seal, brown gray withered soil is there. So the lunar crater is characterized by eight to 10 rings of assemblage of different ecosystem. Some of the uh, metallic stones in the crater can float on the water. So we have studied some of the histosols, stratigraphical studies, stratigraphical point of view, uh, about 105 meter that uniform structure and silty clay we found. And uh, we have done one of the pendulum experiment inside of the crater. So inside of the crater is having gravity, high gravity. Therefore, we have this experiment, pendulum experiment done. The analysis of gravity and magnetic anomalies in the lunar crater lake. Gravity and magnetic anomaly was 2.5 milli Galileo. That is a unit of gravity. And inside of the crater, some bacteria having magnetic property, magnetic eating properties, bacteria are there. So soil inside of the lunar crater lake uh, is uh, the matter was metallic in proper uh, metallic in properties. It consists of ferrous oxides and nickel minerals. So uh, the magnetic properties present inside of the lunar crater. Compass does not work inside of the crater because this type of the magnets and the minerals which are present in the soil. So therefore, compass does not work inside of the lunar crater. Some observation, impact observation inside of the crater we have uh, done during the 2018. Here we have taken one of the in-situ profile. It shows the real catalytic basalt layer is there. This is the basalt and this, this A suggests about the ejecta blanket and this is the inner part of the crater. So this is the ejecta rim profile. So one of the experiment we have conducted inside of the crater, we use uh, turmeric and pour in fresh water, same turmeric pour into lunar crater water lake. Then uh, the uh, fresh water, we get such, uh, such type of yellow color and in lunar water, uh, water that turmeric uh, was the such type of the color gates from the that fresh uh, lunar crater water lake because of uh, high pH. So therefore, water is very alkaline one. So again, we have uh, done the uh, that is difference in between the normal water and lunar water lake. So the turbidity, uh, turbidity of the normal water is 130 units and lunar water lake is very high and normal water pH is 7.8 to near about 8.4, but lunar water lake is more than 10.5. Then these are the comparison in between lunar water lake and the fresh water lake. So insects which are present inside of the crater, the uh, such type of the insects also inside of the lunar crater uh, are present. So hundreds of the beetles are sucking around the fresh water hole. So which, uh, these are the animals which are present in uh, the lunar jungle. So, uh, so desertation work we have conducted during the 2018 and 19. Uh, we, we have taken a GPS survey and soil sample collection sites, 10 samples uh, uh, carried out from the lunar crater lake to understand the water, the depositional, and, uh, depositional environment of the lunar crater lake. So then that soil, uh, we analyzed in our soil lab of my college and the result got 
such type of we uh, conducted uh, carried out from the physical or mechanical analysis mean median sorting skewness and kurtosis then bivariate yeah, tone also we have uh, conducted mean size versus skewness standard deviation standard deviation versus skewness standard deviation versus kurtosis mean size versus kurtosis and then finally we uh, mode of sediment transport uh, uh, conducted to understand whether the sediment are saltation traction or suspension then we got the result that is a mean average size of the sample was uh, in between minus 2 to uh, to 0.6 and the median value uh, we find that sample are characterized by sand uh, some of the samples are coarse sand then standard deviation uh, result got the standard deviation value for the sandstone uh, was ranges from minus uh, 0.3 to 1.3 mm indicating very well sorted to poorly sorted in nature then skewness uh, uh, this indic uh, shows the maximum sample are found to be positively skewed that is in coarser in material then kurtosis uh, the, this uh, kurtosis uh, shows that the samples are characterized by very kurtic to very laptokurtic that means kind to uh, towards the rim side the coarser material we find so these are the result we have taken from the uh, that uh, carried out from the tent sample some of the samples are very coarser coarser in uh, material then standard deviation uh, samples shows that poorly sorted samples some of the samples were moderately sorted some of the very well sorted but lot uh, lot of the samples shows that poorly sorted in nature and skewness uh, in, uh, shows that some of the samples are very strongly positive skewed that means three number sample shows very uh, strongly positive and some of the negatively skewed uh, shows and kurtosis uh, from the kurtosis so most of the samples shows that leptokurtic in nature so then we have conducted visher diagram that visher in 1969 has put forth the model of textural depositional condition of the grains considered the results from his model in the present study area saltation and suspension populus is more dominant so the textural variation of the lonar may help to interpret micro environmental condi condition which are present inside of the lonar crater and it matches with the lonar crater lake so finally we got such type of the result uh, the visual plots indicates the dominance of saltation and suspension population was uh, in admixture so and then finally that uh, result got the depositional environment lonar crater lake the predominant surface sediment type recorded within the lonar crater lake sought to very soft homogeneous mud within an in situ color at the bottom of the boulder uh, boulders unconsolidated boulders were 2 to 3 meters in diameter were locally obs observed down to the rectilinear slope of the lonar crater so this is the lithology one of the study conducted from by the smithsonian institute Uh, up to the one eleven thousand four hundred and fifty meters deep, uh, that uh, the such type of the material got uh, that is calcite. Most of the material argillonite and calcite material got. These are the some of the rocks present of masculinite, uh, textiles, and uh, this metamorphism because of the high energy and some uh, some of the rocks were metamorphic rocks due to high. so the presence of masculinite at the lunar crater uh, it confirms it of the crater fundamental ecological problems of the lunar crater lake uh, so the annual fair occurs towards the uh, northwest of the uh, komlaja devi temple so then the lunar set settlement located on ejecta blanket of the lunar crater they, that see, one of, this is the one of the problem that that sewage water tank on the ejecta blanket which is that sewage water seeps into the lonar crater lake and because of that during the 2000 uh, to 2015 the water level was uh, increases that time this part, this is the part of the lonar settlement towards the east side so this is the nala band nabi nala band which is constructed uh, at the drainage gutter towards the east uh, side of the lonar crater then another one of the uh, problem is that towards the west side there is a one of the dam uh, that is the devulgaon kundapal dam or it is called as kanapani dam what happened because of that dam 
this water during the 2002 to 2015 that water seeps into the lunar crater because the depth of the lunar crater is 150 meter deep but this water is at the surface level that water was seeps into the lunar crater lake due to that the water table was increased during that time so the location of this dam is a faulty location so inside of the crater there is a weak geology therefore the trees falls down so again towards the west uh, northwest side it, there is a plastic airway thrown inside of the lunar crater by villagers and tourists so the such type of the pollution occurs inside of the lunar crater lake and overgrazing was there uh, inside of the lunar crater lake present due, before the 2018 so the blanket ejecta ex ex uh, extending outward from the crater has progressively uh, been brought under the cultivation therefore blanket ejecta is decreasing then the city development taking place is approaching towards the lake which is a which is a the major threat then sewage disposal is another threat to ecosystem ejecta blanket beyond the rim walls is either under unauthorized or authorized construction then demarcation of ejecta blanket h8 has not been done properly so this is the this image shows that lonar settlement is uh, located on ejecta blanket here it is amber lake here it is a uh, ejecta blanket of the lonar this is lonar crater lake and this agricultural patches which are approaching towards the uh, decreasing this ejecta blanket of the lunar crater lake this is the major threat of uh, threat of lunar crater lake so the lunar crater before uh, 1960 it was the ejecta blanket was such type now presently what happened because of the agricultural patches near to ejecta blanket that decreasing towards the east side the ejecta blanket is totally disturbed due to the lunar town and uh the unauthorized activities of the lunar and if it uh, assuming the wet climate total ejecta blanket will be de uh, destroyed so uh, before 2019 uh, de declaration of uh, uh, century national century uh, what happened there was 52 acres uh, land was under the agricultural field but now what happened that agricultural field changed into the thorny forest so therefore again the ecosystem uh, of the in uh, inside of the crater toward the north east side there is a delta that is totally disturbed so th these are the some of the geomorphic problems of the lonar crater lake uh, so here it is a devilgaon dam which is located towards the west side that water seeps during the uh, monsoon season inside of the crater agricultural patch was, was there soil loss is one of the problem then lona town is a, uh, is one of the problem because that lona town uh, uh, more than 60% of the lona town is uh, located on the ejecta blanket that sewage tank uh, which is located on the lonar crater rim that water is seeps inside of the lonar crater lake so then these are the man made structures which are destroying the beauty of lonar crater lake so towards the north side there there is a amber crater which is a circular one the structure is roughly oval shaped with this outmost outermost limit having the major and minor axis is 340 meter and 700 uh, sorry 275 meters respectively so this is the amber crater lake which is uh, sir, somewhat uh, roughly circular in nature uh, the theory about that some scientist tells that it is a secondary crater but uh, that means when the uh, the meteor struck to the in, uh, lunar crater that part blown out uh, again into backward direction uh, towards the north side and then it forms and another theory tells about that when the meteor enters into the atmosphere then because of the friction of the atmosphere some parts of the meteor was deflected towards the north side and north east side therefore it, here it is amber crater is uh, uh, generated and one of the very uh, uh, important thing is to that number of scientists gives attention to the lunar crater and government is also giving to uh, uh, attention to the lunar crater 
but this site is totally destroying no one is going to give the attention towards the amber crater and gagan crater so this is one of the three the, so totally ejecta blank is decreasing of the amber crater so near to the amber crater there is a magnetic maruti a magnetic hanuman temple is there it may be the part of meteorite it is located near the amber crater lake so having the magnetic power maybe it is a part of uh, meteorite so we have seen some of the uh, such such of the withered uh, profile to, uh, near to the amber crater so it this this layer shows that this is a not a volcanic crater because volcanic crater layers you will find such type of the layers but the one of the due to the impact the layers of the soil profile shows uh, such type of the tilting direction near the uh, amber crater lake so uh, this is the threat of amber crater lake that amber crater lake is uh, totally occupied by the agricultural activities so this ejecta blanket of uh, amber crater is uh, again practice such type of the agricultures so another one of the gagan crater is there which is located near the mathmal village this is also the neglected crater which is discovered in 2011 by dr chatterji sir and me so this is also one of the point it is also neglected so uh, during the month of june there was one phenomena uh, that which are puzzled lot of people the color of the lake in, uh, lake inside of the crater has changed this is the landsat landsat image of 5th june 2020 this image is taken by nasa and this is the image of 10th june 2020 of lonar crater lake that color has changed just like as green to slightly uh, faint blue, red or pink color so before uh, this is the horizontal wave before the color was slightly uh, that means green but after uh, the color has changed a slight pinkish or uh, red in color so this is the lunar crater the the images taken by irs Uh, isro uh, that is 11th may 2020 this image is taken then 16th may 2020 26th may and the 10th june 2020 was the, the color was somewhat dark red and uh, faint color so uh, what is there uh, there are two reasons to uh, for the changes of the color one is the fluctuation of lunar water water table Uh, it, and it is very dangerous for the live and microbe which are present inside of the lunar crater lake during uh, the last from 3 to 4 years what happened the salinity of the lunar crater is increased up to more than 108% and before it was 1.2% and this this was the one of the cause the salinity and dissolved water has increased inside of the crater and this is one of the theories that uh, reason is that the microbes the microbes is a very small organism we cannot see by our naked eye it's these microbes uh, in 1 mm uh, that 1 mm microbes can be divided into 1000 microns uh, this uh, this is uh, the microbes uh, vary in sizes uh, in nanometer 10 nanometer to 100 nanometer here it is locus fungi Uh, uh here it is uh, 10 micrometers you will find red bulb cell cells then viruses bacteria below that so the green color of the water because of the blue green algae which is present in the lonar crater lake so uh, in lonar crater lake this lonar crater is a, a very unique because the water is very highly saline and highly alkaline water the number of the 16 types of algae are present bacteria are there fungi are there archaea are there viruses are present and below the 1 meter no oxygen present below uh, that 1 meter in the water so lonar crater lake is a uh, unique because of the bacteria fungi archaea viruses present in the high salinity and high ph so these are the uh, cyanobacterial diversity which is present in the saline and alkaline lonar water lake the dimorphococcus chlorella ankytodesmus the closerium the spirulina then euglena eudorina pandorina pendistrum and cosmerium such type of the uh, cyanobacteria is also present in the lonar crater lake and we find that the 16 types of blue green algae are there present in the lonar crater lake so therefore it is a super 
saline and alkaline water which is present this this is the mini microscope uh, and it can be used as a single molecule detector one of the interesting thing is that uh, in our uh, pune there is a uh, yogesh soche he has discovered that there are three bacteria which is a very special one methane is a, one of the responsible uh, for uh, global warming and in the lunar water lake fine methane eating bacteria are present in the lunar water, water lake then radioactive resistant bacteria that dimo bacteria is also solar resistant bacteria solar nuclear uh, resistant bacteria is also present in the lunar water lake and because of the metallic uh, uh, part of the meteorite which is made from the nickel and ferrous and oxides due to that magnetic uh, magnetic heating property bacteria is also present inside of the lunar crater lake and another this is the one of the cause is that why the crater lake has changed uh, because of this microbe the name of this microbe is junaliella salina this this is a smaller unicellular algae and this produces produces beta carotene pigment and red chlorophyll due to photosynthesis process under the trace of high salinity and high temperature and high saline uh, sunlight and low presence of nutrient this bacteria produce uh, the red color again this is the dulinia uh, algae changes from green to red color inside of the lunar crater lake and another bacteria is halobacteria this this halobacteria try to maintain the water in their body then this bacteria absorbs lot of water therefore the swell, they swells and therefore they burst finally and they generate beta carotene pigments and therefore the lake displays such type of the color from the green to uh, red color or slightly pink color gets through the water then this are this are bacteria is also present in the lon Uh, lunar crater lake that is uh, halo archaea bacteria so phycocerithrin and protein pigments the uh, red pigments this then phycoplankton and tetrodesmium erythrin bacteria is also there so the lunar uh, water lake mystery changed pink this is uh, not something uh, unique uh, th uh, uh, things occurs globally so let us see the examples from the uh, outwards uh, from the world so this is the landsat image of urmia lake in iran during the 3rd august to 1969 the color of water was such type but in uh, 22 august 2011 that color is changed from green to purple color from uh, uh, this is the again the urmia lake of uh, iran during the 2016 the color of urmia lake was uh, green color but in july 2016 color has again changed in reddish color so why occur about uh, about that urmia lake because of the salt concentration and dunal dunali ela salina algae which is re responsible for that and high salinity and production of protective carotenoids also uh, responsible and halobacteria is also responsible for uh, the change of the color of the that this is the view of lake of uh, urmia which is uh, in uh, 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 iran this is the view of urmia lake uh, this is also one of the uh, lake which remains annually uh, pinkish in color that is lake hillier of australia uh, which is uh, uh, find in pinkish color so this is the red lake in france uh, this is again the great salt lake of jordan Uh, some part of that uh, lake certain kinds of algae and bacteria thrives in this portion of the lake which gives the its a uh, pinkish color so this is the dead sea of senegal which is having red in color lake rabata darker of senegal find such type of the pinkish color lake tuz in turkey is having such type of the red color and torrevija of the salty pink lake in spain having such type of uh reddish or some part of the uh, pinkish color this is dusty rose british columbia uh, of canadian lake having such type of the color because of the bacteria or microbe present in the that uh, crater 
this is the lake of norton of tanzania africa having reddish color and koya sikoe hill salt lake of ukraine having such type of the red color and laguna of bolivia represents such type of the uh, red or pinkish somewhat color so another one of the thing is that this interesting thing is that these birds use chemical compounds in their diets to color their exteriors so the flamingo depends on the plant derived chemical compounds to color their feathers legs and beaks so pink way flamingo comes due to the color of water this is on a, one of the again one of the research due to the change of the color this flamingo uh, feathers comes such type of the uh, color and another one of the research is that the coast and sea sugar water with the food coloring which is visible in their transparent abdomens these are the some of the recommendations for the conservation of lunar crater lake which have done by me the immediate diversion of nabinala entering the crater from the northeastern side to the avoid the discharge of sewage from the lunar town inside the crater into the lake there is need to control human or tourist enterprise inside of the lunar crater lake then city development taking place approaching towards the lake ejected blanket of the crater therefore there is need to decide the total eco sensitive zone of the crater by the government immediate reconstruction and modification of proposed lunar mantha road widening plan by pwd uh, so as to divert said road at least half kilometer away from the crater strictly prohibition of hunting and grazing inside of the crater then ban on use of detergent and soap in bathing and washing activities at the dhar and other fresh water springs appointment of necessary and well equipped staff to ensure the effective conservation crater ecology these are the some of the uh, important suggestions prevent the further any construction within 500 meter of the crater rim weekly market should be shipped from the ejecta blanket of the lona crater annual navratri festival inside of the crater should be stopped ship the hindu and muslim crematoriums from the crater rim and increase the eco sensitive zone up to the 2000 meters from the crater rim as like lonar crater lake amber and gagan craters are equally important to understand the impact process so researchers scientists and government should give the equal importance to these craters and very important lonar crater lake is a unique mystery of science it is the responsibility of everyone to preserve this uh, the world heritage of the lunar crater lake this is a unique geographical site of the future research in the field of geomorphology and astronomy this site can be uh, this site can help with many clues to future researchers in their mission to mars and other planets of our solar system hence we all should place to preserve the uniqueness of the lunar crater lake thank you again i would like to thank dr shapurkar sir for inviting me to deliver lecture in this national conference i also really thankful to all participants for patiently listening if you have any doubt or question you can uh, send me email which is given in this last slide so i will try to solve answer of your questions thank you thank you very much okay dr ashok jetkar has given a very thoughtful speech on lunar lake creation by the nature of lunar lake avajit nayak ecosystem hello dr ashok jetkar has given a very resource speech on lunar lake its creation ecosystem of lunar lake biodiversity of lunar lake and overall information about lunar lake why turn turn it pink color so thank you sir now may i request 
KP Shinde sir. Uh, some participants have questions regarding this uh, seminar. Now I hand over to KP Shinde sir to ask the questions. Hey, unmute, unmute, Karo ka sagaran. Kela na? Question sir. Oh, hello. Oh, thank you, uh, Doctor Professor uh, Jester, and uh, uh, the number of questions in that box. Yeah, the part of it regarding changing color of the color in this case, but I think uh, from the lecture of the of the this answer of this question is without. Uh, sir, one question is here. Uh, is observed in the leg and joint equation is another question uh, can we use this water for drinking purpose no no this water is very super saline and alkaline because nowadays what happen the salinity of this crater due to the since uh, 2015 salinity has increased from 1.2 percent to 1.8 percent so this water is very uh, Alka, uh, saline and also in this uh, crater lake the number of microbes are there and pH of this water is more than 10.5 so this water is also having uh, alkaline one so this water we cannot use for drinking, drinking purpose okay thank you sir uh, one more question is there is there relationship between the uh, main lunar lake and surrounding lakes Yes, pardon, please. Is there any relationship between the main solar lake and uh, surrounding lake around that? Yes, there is a relationship between uh, uh, in that craters because uh, when the meteor comes from the atmosphere, due to the friction of that meteor, uh, the nearby two craters are there. Umber crater is there, and again one of the small crater, that Gagan crater that uh, meteor's part was deflected towards the uh, north and northwest side because meteor come from 17 degree to 30 degree angle from the northeast side. So that two parts of the uh, meteor uh, stuck to the, uh, towards the north side and northwest side. So there is a relationship in between Lonar Crater Lake, Umber Crater Lake and Gagan Crater Lake. Okay, uh, so one more question is there. Uh, what is the effect of such high alkaline pH of lunar water on nearby agriculture area? No, no, that water uh, we cannot use for uh, use for uh, agricultural purpose because that water is a very saline one because dissolved solids are collected inside of the. There is no outlet for that water since from the creation of that water there is no outlet. So that water is having very saline one, saline water, very saline than the uh, oceanic water, very high salinity than the oceanic water. So that water we cannot use for agricultural purpose. And not only saline, but that water is also alkaline one. So we cannot use that water for our agricultural purpose. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, one more question is there. Yes, please. Uh, some people use this saline water to cure skin diseases. Why it is so? No, no. This, uh, this water is not for us uh, use for skin diseases. That whatever the Dhar, Dhar Valley is there. there, there are five springs are there. Towards the northwest side, there is a Dhar, which is a very uh, big stream is there. There, uh, big spring is there, and that uh, water uh, pilgrims and Another uh, uh, tourist uh, used to make the bath from that that water, uh, and it is uh, one of the important to uh, of that water to skin diseases. Uh, th there is a mythology behind to that. 
Uh, Atul sir, uh, yes, one more question is there. Uh, will you explain the stages of formation of this crater lake? Stages of air. Okay, earlier slide, oh, okay. in the earlier slide, earlier slide I have explained about, even on my guide, uh, research project guide, Dr. Arish Chatterjee also explained oh. about the uh, formation stages. And I have also explained about the six formation stages. Uh, when the, that meteor stuck to the earth surface, then because of that uh, weight of the meteor, uh, the, the shock wave generates and therefore uh, the whatever the force uh, and uh, anti-force generate due to that uh, ejecta blankets creates uh, whatever uh, that parts ejected outward direction and fracture rocks generates and finally crater, crater forms uh, even some of the craters because of the uh, the whatever the force come from the meteor and anti-force generate due to that uh, structure cones also develop inside of the crater. But in the lunar crater lake, there is no shutter cone. According to some scientists, there is no shutter cone present in the lunar crater lake. Yes, sir, uh, one more question, last question is okay. uh, with, yes. Whether there is any evidences of radioactivity in the crop surrounding by the lake? Radioactivity? Yeah. Any evidences in this dirt crops? No, no, there is no evidences about the radioactivity. Uh, now questions are over. Uh, I am handing to uh, Mr. Uh, Dalit. Yes, there is Saptarshi sir, sir. Saptarshi sir is present in this uh, uh, seminar. So few words Saptarshi sir will uh, some explain about uh, this uh, seminar, sir. Honorable Saptarshi sir. Saptarshi sir, unmute kara. Saptarshi sir, unmute kara. Saptarshi sir, unmute kara. Sagar, unmute kara. Okay. Atul. Shri Saran sir, unmute ke lele. Saptarshi sir. सप्तर्षी सर, हाँ सर, अनम्यूट के लिए बोला सर आपन, आवाज आवाज इतने ही सर, Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for giving me opportunity to comment on my student's presentation, uh, Dr. Atul Jhete. It, it was really amazing and excellent, wonderful presentation in English. And I am hearing this uh, uh, first time that uh, Atul is ably uh, uh, answered the queries also, and he has uh, given the multidisciplinary and multi-date uh, view uh, of the uh, this crater lake, and also he has given the idea why this has the why the color of the uh, crater lake has been changed suddenly on 10th June, and this. Uh, is mainly due to some ecological process. And uh, really, I, I congratulate him because he has covered the ecological, biological, microbiological, um, the uh, volcanicity, structure, rock layer, uh, rock structure, everything, everything he has. Uh, and also the impact of terrestrial bodies. He has uh, covered all these things and he has personally gone there and analyzed the, uh, carried out the chemical analysis and uh, physical chemical analysis of soils, water, and also groundwater. He has also invented uh, at what level the um, potable water can be 
found. Uh, so his, uh, his job is really excellent. And I congratulate organizers for inviting him, uh, one who is your alumnus. And uh, I think that uh, this kind of webinar will definitely add into your credits to get the accreditation A++. So uh, congratulations to the principal and the management and all the teachers and geographers. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, sir. sir. Thank, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank, thank you, very you, much, sir. I'm also <laughs> thankful for uh, Chatterjee, sir, and Saptarji, sir, and uh, Shapurkar, sir, and Gavani, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Very nice presentation. Thank you, Atul, sir. Thank you, Chatterjee, sir. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Khub diusani disle chere. At the mask kada lagi. Okay, uh, um, now may I request Professor D.B. Sunkamble, sir, for what type of hands? आमच्या नॅशनल ऑनलाईन सेमिनारचे चीफ ऑर्गनायझर आमच्या राजर्षी मा शाहू महाविद्यालयाचे प्राचार्य आदरणीय डॉक्टर महादेव गव्हाणे सरांनी आम्हाला सेमिनार घेण्यास तात्काळ परवानगी देऊन प्रोत्साहन दिल्यामुळे व आजचे सेमिनार वेळ कमी असतानाही यश यशस्वीरित्या पार पाडू शकलो त्यामुळे त्यांचेही मनापासून आभार मानतो जॉईंट ऑर्गनायझर आदरणीय डॉक्टर ए जे राजू सर उपप्राचार्य राजर्षी शाहू महाविद्यालय लातूर आय ट्रॅक कॉर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर अभिजित यादव सर यांचेही सहकार्य लाभल्याबद्दल त्यांचे आभार आम्हाला नेहमी प्रसन्न ठेवून 
कमी वे जाती जास्त काम करना व कर विभाग प्रमुख आदरणीय डॉक्टर ओम प्रकाश शाहपुरकर खूब मेहनत घेन से यशस्वी के बदल ही आभार मानतो सर चलवाजर कमिटी के अध्यक्ष आम वरिष्ठ सहकारी डॉक्टर सुरेश फुले ही सहकार्य लगल आदार आभार सेमिनार विजय दवी सर सेमिनार से एंकरिंग अतिशय चांगल प्रकार के बदल आभार ऑर्गनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी किशोर शिंदे जॉइंट ऑर्गनाइजिंग सेक्रेटरी डॉक्टर संदीपा नादो आभार मानतो दीपक वेदपाटक राहुल आठवले केशन शिंदे बालाजी डॉक्टर सचिन भंडारे आम महाविद्यालय ओएस रजिस्ट्रार हे आभार मानतो या सेमिनार मध्य प्रत्यक्ष अप्रत्यक्ष सहभागी विद्या शिक्षक अभ्यास प्राध्यापक शिक्षक कर्मचारी हे आभार मानतो अध्यक्ष परवानगी ने सेमिनार संपन्न धन्यवाद एक जे सर्व सहभागी सहभागी पार्टिसिपंट्स जे आहेत त्यांना एक विनंती आहे की फीडबॅक लिंक आपल्या ईमेल वर पाठवण्यात येणार आहे त्याचबरोबर टेलिग्राम ग्रुपला ही टेलिग्राम ग्रुपला ही ती पाठवलेली आहे आणि चॅट बॉक्स मध्ये सुद्धा फीडबॅक लिंक दिलेली आहे तरी आपण करावा अशी विनंती धन्यवाद सगळ्यांना सगळ्यांचे आभार धन्यवाद चॅटर्जी सर धन्यवाद अतुल सर धन्यवाद आणि सर्व पार्टिसिपंट चे आभार बंद कर तिकडे काय तर Oh, I'm going to go to the next one.